big breath, and now we're in major, right. and pick up the tempo. Okay. We want to train artist teachers. In other words, we don't want to abandon that which brought them here, which is performing. They love to perform. That's their first love. So we develop that performer in all of them. Go make that happen and outline everything or frame it out. And then later when you put the whole scale in, those points still hit exactly at those places in time. Do it again. I was performing uh, professionally and teaching in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. SFA had a, a, an opening come up to teach trumpet. They contacted me and asked me if I wanted to come and interview for the job and audition, and so I did. Uh, always thinking, of, it was sold to me as a, as a part-time job a couple days a week, and uh, so my wife and I said, why not? Let's go see what it's all about. So my wife, Mindy, and I drove down to take the interview, and from the moment we entered uh, the city limits, we were impressed by all the pine trees. We're both from New Mexico, and uh, it reminded us of home, of the mountainous part of New Mexico. And we, we, we were encouraged by what we saw. I came and interviewed and auditioned, and I was offered the job that day. Um, when we got home, the offer was on the answering machine. So I took it and uh, always thought it was just going to be something I did for a couple of years until I ended up uh, making it into a full-time orchestra somewhere. I was experiencing a lot of frustration at not having the success I wanted taking these orchestra auditions, and I confessed to my wife, Mindy, that I just couldn't figure out what God wanted me to do. I was busting my hump for these orchestra auditions. I wanted it desperately. And if I was barking up the wrong tree, I wish God would just give me a sign. And she looked at me with a look that, that uh, only a wife can give with all that love in it and said, you know, you just don't get it, do you? College jobs are as hard to get as orchestra jobs. And you were just sitting around one day and the phone rang and you were offered the chance to interview for one and you got the job. What kind of sign exactly are you waiting for? A lightning bolt? And from that day on, I knew this was what I was supposed to be doing. And uh, so here I am in my 20th year, uh, still doing it. But somewhere along the line and not too deep into it, I realized that uh, this was what I wanted to be doing uh, more so than playing in an orchestra or something like that. Uh, I often tell my students that I am here only as the testament to some great teachers. And I mean dating back to my first teacher as a sixth grade band member. All the way through high school and all three of my college degrees, I had great teachers. They challenged me, they encouraged me, and they uh, occasionally threatened me when I needed it, and I'm sure I did. But in the end, I think they taught me to be my own best teacher. And that's probably my top goal as a teacher for my students. I want them to be able to teach themselves once they're out on their own. The truth is the day is coming when they'll be responsible for producing a result, whether musically or as teachers, without someone at their elbow telling them how to do it. I, I hold the bar high. I don't back off too much. When they reach it, they're real happy for that. But I kind of got a lot of that from Dr. Leonard Candelaria, who was my teacher for both my master's and my doctorate. You knew when you went in to study with Candelaria, you were going to be challenged and you were going to be pushed hard. He wasn't going to settle for results any less than the best you could produce every single day. He wasn't going to accept any excuses. Uh, because he knew you could uh, do something really special and he was going to, to push you to get that way. And that being said, I, I bring that, I hope, to my own teaching studio. And so I think in a lot of ways the example he was as a teacher, the example he was as a, as a player and, and just as a, a faculty member at a university, I think walk with me every day here. That example is one that I'm happy to carry on and uh, hold the standards high myself. Yeah, as Candelaria saw my degree coming closer and closer to an end, uh, he was encouraging me to pursue the highest position I could find. He made it clear he was confident there was a place out in the university teaching field for me, and he, he thought it would be at some large flagship institution. But I was already teaching here at SFA, and I was really happy here and with the things that were going on here, and so I 
Invited him to come here as a guest artist, do a little residency, uh, work with my students, meet my colleagues, just see SFA. He did, he came out and spent some time with me and with the students. And after a couple of days here, I still remember he was impressed and he said, you know, you need to finish this doctorate so that you can secure your position here at SFA. This would be a great place to spend a career. You always have to go back when you're at a university to the students and getting to work with terrific young musicians, motivated young musicians, watching them develop. So often we get uh, students here who, uh, for example, never had a private lesson on their instrument. That's what I do here. I teach trumpet. I take trumpet players and we work individually in a private setting every week specifically to develop their own personal playing attributes teach them work ethic, teach them how to be the whole package, uh, teach them how to play all styles of music, classical, orchestral music, all the way to contemporary jazz, to see them find what they like and then help them discover themselves in it, help them to develop their abilities. That's, that's the real reward. That's where you realize you've got something really neat to do. They believe in what I'm here to, to teach them. You know, I, I try to lead by example, musically, academically, the way I carry myself, and uh, I see them without asking for it, sort of mimicking that. You get a lot of success out of that. I'm fortunate. I really, really know my students. They're not somebody on an advisor list who took a couple of classes en masse with so many other students. I recruited them, I advised them, I graduated them. We really get to know each other, so I'm, I'm very aware of their progress. Again, many of them are just so raw, just so undeveloped. They get here and you just see them grasping everything that comes their way and it's overwhelming at times, but they, you know, generally they love it and uh, because they chose something they, they have a real, a, a real passion for. Just yesterday a student who graduated six years ago wrote me a Facebook message to ask me a question about something she needed to teach. Dr. Wirtz, what am I going to do about this? And, you know, I, there I am, still involved in their lives so many years later, and it's, it's a real joy. As the first thing I want when I meet you and discover that you're pretty talented is I want you to come to SFA. And then once you're here, as soon as you cross the threshold, I want you to get out of here, but with a degree in hand, qualified to go out and enter the workforce. And so I'm always proud when they get there.